Hi darling hearts, Freya Graf here, your resident holistic sex coach and yoni mapping therapist. Today I'm popping in to drop some little tips on your tushies for when desire and sexual excitement fade in your relationship. Firstly, I just want you to know that this is really common. Um, really, really common. <laughs> like, seriously. Especially for like longer term relationships and especially for women. We vag owners actually get bored and lose interest faster than men do. That is a fact. Um, there are studies on this. And, and this is because for a female bodied person to feel really aroused and intrigued and excited sexually, we need some novelty and mystery. And it's a tricky thing because we also need safety and security to experience our max levels of pleasure and fully surrender to the deepest orgasms. But we also crave and are attracted to newness and the unpredictable and the unfamiliar, the mysterious, you know? So of course, when you've been with someone for a while, the novelty and the newness begin to wear off and the desire and eros can begin to decline or fade. Um, and I'll talk about what to do about this in a moment, but I do just want to present another possible reason for why desire might fade in a relationship especially if it's a fresh one um, and you're thinking like, wow, why do I not feel like having sex with this person or why aren't I attracted to them? It could also be that the sex you're having is just not that great and the chemistry isn't on point or you're incompatible in various ways. Um, the relationship like literally just might not be meeting your needs or making you feel safe and secure and loved and valued, respected and heard. You know, if you're not being treated right or not being made love to beautifully or you don't feel seen or heard with a partner, well, that's your problem. And the desire is probably not going to come back and there's probably not much point on working on it, you know. Um, however, you know, in the cases where you have a great relationship, you adore each other, but, um, you know, and, and maybe... The sex was never great, but like there's so much love and other compatible, compatible areas there that you do want to work on it and the partner's willing to work on it. Awesome. Maybe you make sweet, sweet, sweet love and it's all great, but you're just losing interest and motivation over time because you've been together for a long time. This isn't necessarily because like the relationship's broken or you're not attracted to them anymore. It's actually a really normal thing to happen um, the longer you're with someone. And there's nothing wrong with either of you in that case, um, or you as a couple. So just so you know, um, just requires a bit of work and an intentional approach to build the desire back up. Um, that's where most people don't know what to do. And then they start worrying that they're doomed. Um, maybe they should give up. Maybe they're not right for each other anymore. They're never going to be sexually fulfilled. So like give up on it. But it is work onable. And here are my top tips for when this happens. Um, and this is all backed up by research and studies. So firstly, you obviously need to get back a sense of novelty or mystery to create some newness and therefore build the excitement and the eros. Because remember, we need newness, novelty, mystery. This can be done by deliberately spending more time apart and making sure you get enough space from each other and you do activities and hobbies and spend time with your own friends so that when you do see each other, you have some, some shit to talk about. There's been a bit of variety and you don't just know every single thing that the other person has done with their day, which leaves no mystery and no unknown. It's been shown that if you try out new activities or learn a new skill together or separately, this increases desire because of the novelty and variety. So go away for the day and do a new activity or spend your time on something different and then come back together and tell each other about it. Seeing or hearing about one another in new settings, doing new activities, also increases desire for one another. Um, Esther Perel has a really great book on this called Mating in Captivity and she suggests that you go on date nights where you both arrive separately and just for a few moments when you arrive you observe the other person from afar as though you would if you were a stranger seeing them from across the room. Um, and this is where stuff like role play 
can come into it because you can pretend to be in a novel situation in the bedroom or if you know if you're game you can pretend to not know each other or chat or flirt with other people at a bar and just observe the other person doing their own thing that can be a real turn on for some people and um, you know, and then, you know, in, in a private setting in the bedroom, role playing and pretending to be in novel situations can be novel in itself and then bring a bit of that mystery in. Um, watching your partner doing a new activity or speaking with other people like this can help you perceive them in a new light um, and therefore create a sense of novelty where there wasn't any room for that before when you just like did the same old things together day in, day out. Um, and on that note, bringing in new and exciting um, things to your bedroom repertoire just to like vary it, that can spice things up too. So trying new things, um, exploring new frontiers in intimacy in the bedroom can be really amazing for keeping the spark alive or reactivating things if they had become a bit stale. So like there are games you can play and, and cards that you can buy that help give you ideas and provoke conversations about different sex acts that you might, you know, like to talk about or explore and, and that kind of thing, just playing games, reading the cards out or, or even just um, bringing a new activity or sex move or sex act or something, approach to intimacy and sex. If you each bring a new thing in every now and then to try, that can be really helpful and really fun. Another tip is that if you have kids, <laughs> to just do whatever is in your means to make sure you set aside some quality time for just the two of you to be a couple, just a couple, not parents for once. Um, so date nights are really important. Go to a different restaurant each time or see a live music gig or learn salsa dancing together. Take a tantra class or go to a workshop, keep it fresh and exciting. And that will be reflected in the bedroom because that's kind of pairing in that new activity novelty factor um, as well as getting time for just the two of you to be a couple again and not parents. And I know this is a huge privilege to actually be able to find time or afford a babysitter or something. Um, but whatever you can do, get time, just the two of you together if you can. Um, so speaking of getting out of your usual routine, it's actually a fun fact that couples have more sex and better sex. So more, more of it and better when they're on holiday. And this is probably because of the novelty of a new environment, the relaxation aspect of being on holiday, meaning that their libido has a chance to ramp up, you know, when it's not being squashed by stress and responsibility every day. And the fact that you often do new activities when you're on holiday. So it's all of those things, like you've got the relaxation, you've got the new novel environment, and you're doing new and different activities and seeing one another in a different environment building in novelty and newness. One last tip is that if you can find a way to observe your partner in their element, that is a turn on. So if, you're, um, if your partner plays in a band, go watch them gig. Or if they're great at sport, go sit in the grandstands and watch them play. Or if they love dancing or they speak another language fluently or any, any other thing that they do where they're just fully in their zone, you know, in their zone of genius feeling really like comfortable and powerful and proficient, you know, it's, they're, in, they're in flow and they're in their element, find a way to get to witness that when you can. It is really attractive seeing someone in their element doing something they're great at and you can appreciate this and pay more attention to it, which will increase your desire for them and help you like see them through that lens and a, and kind of be like oh yeah wow like that's hot they're great at that look how comfortable they are look how confident they are look how they're handling that you know so anyway it's it's obviously a really complex topic and it will be you know you it'll need different solutions for different couples but these are some really foundational things that you can do to increase the polarity and the eros between you um, and i hope it's been helpful um, feel free to read that book I mentioned, Mating in Captivity. That's really great. Um, and also follow me on my socials or my podcast, The Labia Lounge, to hear more detailed tips and discussions about this sort of thing. Uh, I'll pop the links in the caption. 
and I'd also appreciate it if you liked or shared this video with someone who might find it helpful and subscribed for more of this action from yours truly.